King Nebuchadnezzar had a gold statue made, 90 feet high and 9 feet wide, and he had it set up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then the king gave order for all his officials to come together. When all these officials gathered for the dedication and stood in front of the statue, a herald announced in a loud voice, People of all nations, races, and languages, you are here the sound of the trumpets, followed by the plain of obes, layers, zippers, and hearts. And then other instruments will join. As soon as the music starts, you are to bow down and worship the gold statue that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Anyone who does not bow down and worship will immediately go into a blazing furnace. And so, as soon as they heard the sound of the instruments, the people of all nations, races, and languages bowed down and worshipped the gold statue which King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. It was then that some Babylonians took the opportunity to denounce the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, Your Majesty has initiated an order that as soon as the music starts, everyone is to bow down and worship the gold statue. And that anyone who does not bow down and worship it is to be thrown into a blazing furnace. There are some Jews whom you put in charge the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who are disobeying your majesty's orders. They do not worship your God or bow down to the statue you set up. At that, the king flew into a rage and ordered the three men to be brought before him. He said to them, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, is it true that you refuse to worship my God? and bow down to the golden statue that I set up. If you do not, you will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. Do you think there is any God who can save you? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered, Your Majesty, we will not try to defend ourselves. If the God whom we serve is able to save us from the blazing furnace, and from your power, then he will. But even if he doesn't, your majesty may be sure that we will not worship you, God. And we will not bow down to the gold statue that you have set up. Oh, what is up? And happy spooktacular, Church by the Glades. So glad you're here. If you're new, especially first time ever at our church. We enjoy Halloween season. We have some fun blowing up this time of year. In fact, I gotta tell you, this might be my favorite weekend of the entire year at Church by the Glades. Give it up for our dance team, production team, video team at your campus, making this fun and exciting and church very, very undall. And if you're here, uh, maybe, maybe just for this special scary weekend, welcome. Over you're here all the time, welcome through. You're with us. If you're not a regular, maybe think about coming back. Unsinkable starts next week. I mean, how can you live a life where you're not just staying afloat, not just treading water, but in, in the storms of life, you can really have an unsinkable existence. God wants you to know things and do things, to live a life of victory. I love the front row here. It's like, <laughs> the spooky clouds, it's haze, it's, it's, it's all good. So anyways, that'll be a lot of fun. So come back and hang out with us in November. Then, of course, in December, uh, gosh, you got to make plans for Christmas. What Church by the Glaze does for Christmas season is always such fun. And so uh, make sure you're with us. Dream is the name of the theme this year. We're releasing that. So Dream, give it up for Dream, a Christmas experience. What's that mean? Not going to tell you. You're going to come back and see. But uh, last year, it was a Christmas du Soleil. Who made it to Christmas du Soleil? Yeah, you were like uh, among 20,000 plus people that came last year. Uh, of course, it's all free of charge. It was remarkable what they did on these stages at all of our campuses. So much fun. So don't miss Dream. Make your plans right now. And speaking of campuses, you may not know this. We're one church in several locations. Let's loudly, boys and girls, let's welcome our campuses. What's up, Sample Road Campus? Come on. Lake Worth Campus, Dade CI Homestead. 
Glad you folks are with us, watching online, watching on TV. This is spectacular, our scary time of year. And of course, the theme this year is homage to one of my favorite Disney rides, the Tower of Terror. I want you at all of our campuses to make some noise, when I say three, if you love going to Disney. I want you to get loud if you love going to Disney. All campuses, ready? One, two, three. Yeah, oh, yeah. Me too, I love, I love. I love Disney is incredible, it's so much fun. I love all the different rides at Disney. is wow, Tower of Terror is a great ride. But what's your favorite ride, what's your favorite ride? When I say three, all campuses, boys and girls, moms and dads, shout out your favorite ride at Disney. Ready, when I say three, one, two, three. Oh yeah, I love, I love Space Mountain, it's great, I totally agree. Oh, the new Slinky Dog roller coaster, great answer over here, I love that one as well. How about this, how about this? When I say three, what's your favorite scary ride at Disney? What's your favorite scary ride? Think about the scary rides, ready? When I say three, what's your favorite scary ride? Ready, one, two, three. Okay, if, if you did not say, it's a small world after all, yours is the wrong answer. Because those dolls, let's be honest, those dolls, they're a little creepy, aren't those dolls? They're a little like, dolls can be creepy. Ever seen Chucky, Chucky, ever seen Chucky? The dolls can be really, I'm just saying, so. Yeah, let's get rid of that one. Whoa, so that, that's, for me, it's a small world. In fact, my, my 10-year-old has never been on that ride. Why? Because his father loves him. That's the reason why. Anyways, so it's Tower of Terror this time. I won't keep you very long, but just a couple of thoughts about this. Uh, you know, Tower of Terror came online, moms and dads, 1994. It was the most sophisticated technology ride of its day. It's a thrill ride. Uh, back in 1994, who ever read it back in the early 90s? Remember back in the day, Tower of Terror would take you up one time, and then drop you one time. But somewhere along the line, the Imagineers at Disney thought, that's not enough. And now it's a random sequence of rapid ascents and abrupt falls. Like a number of times, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, like everything else in my life, up and down, up and down. But with life being so fluid and unpredictable, how can you live an unsinkable, rock-solid life based on the promises of God. I think you really can. So we're talking about Tower of Terror. And by the way, so Tower of Terror, 1994. Uh, Disney World came online in uh, 1971. Disneyland, 1955. By the way, moms and dads, in 1955, here's how much it costs to get into Disneyland. One dollar. You can fact check me, Google it. One dollar to get into Disneyland, 1955. Moms and dads, when I say three, would you please shout the word inflation? Ready, one, two, three. Because <laughs> it's not a dollar anymore, is it? I mean, a do what's a dollar get you these days? Not, not, what's a dollar get you these days? Wow, you know? Woo, dollar, right? I do that more than once. Wouldn't hurt me too bad. In fact, I looked at a website just this past week, a travel website, said for an average family who would fly in coach from middle America, stay at a Disney resort, but an economy resort, eat the lesser expensive meals, for four days, for a family of four, they should budget between six and seven thousand dollars. What happened to one dollar? Six or seven thousand, which I say this, don't go in debt for Disney. Don't buy your pass on time. Don't mortgage your house for the mouse, amen? But if you can save the money, worth it. I mean, Disney is awesome, right? Disney is fun. If you can save and budget it, right, to go to Disney occasionally, as a kid, we'd go up and back all in one day to Magic Kingdom. Disney is fun, it's worth the price, but here's something that's never worth the price, fear. Fear will cost you opportunity. Fear will exact a price of your, your potential. Fear will mess you up. And the boys and girls did a great job reading a story from Daniel chapter three about fear. Kids, when I say three, would you shout the word loudly, fear, ready? One, two, three. Fear. fear. Oh, man, fear will mess you up. Daniel chapter 3 is a story about three remarkable young Jewish men, these Hebrew heroes. I love their names. Their names are incredible. Okay, before I get to that story, guys, I got this amazing visual aid behind me. It's really tall. I've been preaching on tall things. So what images do you have in your archive of things that are tall that I can use for maybe a talking point? That's a good one. That's a good one. You know, the castle, Magic King. What, what else do you have? Something a little older, a little older, more... Big Ben, Big Ben's really nice. You ever take a trip to London? Uh, anything else, anything else, guys? What do you have? 
Empire State Building to do a series on how they built that in the Great Depression in January. Uh, how about something, I don't know, uh, ancient Mesopotamia, mid 10th century BC, maybe Babylon, do you have anything there? Do you have, perfect. Oh, that's the statue, boys and girls, that King Nebuchadnezzar built in Babylon and the story found in the book of Daniel in the Old Testament is the story of these three guys and kids. Their names are amazing. I love their names. I want you to say the names with me. The first young man's name was Shadrach. Shadrach. I think I have a picture, an actual photo of Shadrach. He looks a lot like Eric, our campus pastor of Sample Road. By the way, I love Shadrach's sense of kicks. Great styles. Looks like the Air Jordans, Air Force Ones. Here we go. All right, Shadrach. Boys and girls, when I say three, I want you to shout. As loud as you can, the name Shadrach. Ready? One, two, three. I thought I said loud. I, 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 I heard something. Uh, Rob, I heard something very quiet out there, very quiet, like a gentle feather falling maybe on the grass. Let's try that again. When I say three, Shadrach, but loud this time. Ready? Because that was kind of quiet. One, two, three. A little better. I heard something again, very quiet, maybe like a little tiny ladybug burping. When I say three, shout Shadrach as loud as you know how. Ready, one, two, three. That was loud. So Shadrach, number two, Meshach. When I say three, say Meshach. Ready, one, two, three, Meshach. Then my favorite name is the third brother. His name is Abednego. Is that a great name? Abednego. Ready, one, two, three, Abednego. Now, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego uh, came to Babylon, they were servants, a little more than slaves, but they worked really hard. They maximized opportunities. Boys and girls, they worked really hard because they had a chance for education. Oh my gosh, they studied. I always tell you guys, don't ask God to bless you with an A if you just study for a C. They worked really hard and they climbed up the ladder. And after a while, they got jobs working for the king. Is that incredible? Oh my gosh, wow, they were so successful. Then in Daniel chapter three, who likes a good party? Come on, who likes a good party? They get invited to the party of the season, a royal party. Oh my, you like good parties? I love good parties. This was a party offered by the king, all the important people, the governors and the rulers and administrators, hundreds of people at the king's royal party in Babylon. And guess what? What was their names? Shadrach. Meshach and uh, Abednego got invited from refugees to VIPs. Oh my gosh, they are there on the guest list. There's Babylonian bodyguards. There's a velvet rope. There's a red carpet. There's Mesopotamian paparazzi everywhere. They're getting swag bags. Oh my gosh. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego got invited to the royal party with hundreds of other people. But listen, sometimes, just like at Disney, there's a hidden price. I love Disney, but mom and dad, every, every ride ends what? In a gift shop. There's a hidden price. Disney is awesome, but a Diet Coke, Coke costs you $4.75. There's a hidden price. Turkey leg, $13. Are you kidding me? Right? Hidden price. So at the big party, they're excited. They're at the cool kid table. The king unveils his 90-foot tall golden statue and commands all of his rulers to bow down and worship the statue. Now, that's a problem for Shadrach, Meshach, and uh, Abednego. Uh, who, who, uh, uh, Abednego. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego because they love the God of the Bible. And this loving God gave us some commandments, some relationship rules, some 10 relationship rules. Rule number one is he is the true God. He's the true God. Rule one is he is the true God. Say it with me. Rule one is he is the true God. And rule two is we don't do idols. We don't do idols. So they had to choose. What do, do they honor the king or honor God? Do they do what the crowd's going to do, peer pressure, or do what God calls them to do? The right, they had a, a dilemma on their hands. They were kind of confused. I mean, what, what do we do in a moment like this? What decision do we make? Because guess what? Fear will cost you something every single time. It'll cost you God's blessing, God's favor. And gosh, guess what? If they don't bow down, hundreds and thousands of people around the kingdom are gonna bow down and they'll have to stand all 
alone. It's hard to stand alone, isn't it? In fact, there's a phobia called uh, autophobia. It's the fear of standing alone. It's hard when the whole world's compromising, making bad decisions, doing things you know you shouldn't do to stand alone and do the right thing. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had a choice to make. Do they just fall into line with the king and the rest of the officials, or do they stand when the whole world bows? Wow, what a hard decision. It's tough to stand alone. But boys and girls, great things happen when you have the courage to stand alone. The world changes when you have the courage to stand alone. How about these heroes? Rosa Parks. Yes, Rosa Parks had the courage not to give up her seat on an Alabama bus. She had the courage to stand alone. How about, remember on TV that lone protester in Tiananmen Square years ago? One person stood up against a, a line of Chinese tanks standing up for freedom. He had the courage to stand alone. Throughout history, Martin Luther had the courage to stand for his faith convictions. Galileo had the courage to stand for his scientific convictions. The old man in the first Avengers movie who stood against Loki. Not true, but it was kind of a cool scene, had the courage to stand alone, right? Great things happen when you have the courage to stand alone. So in that moment, when the DJ played the music and the entire kingdom bowed down, they compromised, they did the wrong thing. Three men, guess who? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stand all alone. Wow, what courage. They would not give in to fear. Now quickly, I'll only wrap it up by telling you this. So what happened when they stood and did the right thing? They got promotions. They got raises. They got dates with the hottest girls at the Babylonian high school. <laughs> Note what happened, they did the right thing and they got in trouble. Oh, are you kidding me? Sometimes in the short term, things get worse before they get better. They stood alone. You can read with your mom and dad, maybe tonight when you get home after enjoying some candy. You can read in Daniel chapter three, the king got so mad. What happened was, oh my, the king freaked out because some people ratted them out, seemed like their luck had run out and they got thrown into a furnace of fire. And the Bible says, oh, King Nebuchadnezzar sat down in his barco lounger with an iced tea with a little umbrella on it and watched to see them die in the fire. But guess what happened? They didn't die. The Bible says God protected them. In fact, they weren't tied up, they were walking around, they were unharmed, they didn't even smell like smoke when they came out of the furnace. And the coolest thing is, one of the best verses in the Old Testament, when old Nebuchadnezzar looked in there and saw Shadrach, Meshach, and uh, Abednego unharmed in the flame, and he, he started to count, one, two, three, four. He said to his entourage, didn't I throw three men in the fire? Why are there four men now? And then he said, quote, and the fourth man looks like the son of God. God. Why did Nebuchadnezzar say the fourth one looked like the Son of God? Because it was the Son of God. You see, here's the trick, here's the trick. When you stand alone, one idea, one, I, one point sermon. When you stand alone, try never to stand alone. When you stand alone, try not to stand alone, meaning this, you need just a couple of friends who have your back who will stand with you. Think about the story. Thousands of people bowed, but Shadrach didn't bow, but Shadrach had Meshach. And Meshach had who? When he stood by himself, it wasn't really alone. Meshach had, had Shadrach and Abednego. And Abednego didn't stand alone, did he? Not really. He had his two BFFs. You need people in life who believe in you and believe in your God. It's the power of healthy spiritual relationships, so vital in life. Look what it says in Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17 on the screen right now. It says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Quickly, before I let you go, so where do you find these relationships? Moms and dads, if I can take off my pastor hat, put on my, my, my dad hat, I'll just tell you this, we have three kids, Thus far, all three kids are turned out pretty well. They work hard in school. My big kids are in their late teens. They don't party, they don't drink, they don't do the things so many kids do today. My youngest man, he's a great kid, fourth grade. And I wish I could say it was brilliant parenting. It's a brilliant mama, but it's not brilliant parenting. I would tell you, 
is the spiritual synergy of raising our kids in the house of God. And no one here is shocked that the preacher thinks church is a good idea, but I'm telling you, with the pressures and temptations our kids face today, why would you not take advantage of the allies of people, volunteers and staff, that want to pour into the life of your kids? So we've raised our kids from the time, gosh, nine months before they were born in the house of God. So the various ministries we have here at every campus, we start with something called First Look. First Look is, uh, well, it's, it's from birth to age four, and already we start to teach them lessons. They matter to God. That God loves them, and God has made them uniquely, and they have a great purpose in life. And then, oh my gosh, it takes off in Kid Stuff Ministry. That's, come on, give it up for Kid Stuff Ministry. We're our best, most talented people in our church. Pastor Roy and his team, they do a version of this every single weekend. By the way, parents, me and my fourth grader fight about church almost every single weekend. We fight about, we argue about church. You might think, yeah, he didn't want to go and you make him go because he's a preacher's kid. No, truth be told, he wants to go to all six services. Doesn't he, Lisa? All six. I'm like, buddy, that's a lot. We just let him go, all six services because Pastor Roy's team makes it that much fun. Every campus, Kids Stuff Ministry, then it really takes off middle school and high school. Those years are so hard to navigate. We have a ministry here called The Wave for those ages and then something called Camp United. So it's at every campus, at this campus, four or 500 kids meet on this campus every Wednesday night. These are kids trying to make good decisions. They encourage each other. They become Shadrachs and Meshachs and Abednegoes to one another. And then we just started something for, you know, age 18 and up. When they age out, it's called Rally. It's a young adult service. They met in this room just on Friday night. Come on, give it up for Rally. So no matter where you are in your life journey, there are people that will sharpen you, believe in you, stand with you. See, here it is in life, it's hard to stand. We all have, you know, autophobia to a degree. But when you stand in life, when it's hard to stand, we don't com compromise or surrender to what is wrong. When you stand alone, try not to stand alone. Make sure you have just two or three people that have your back and love you and believe in you. Vital in life. Well, quickly, you can read the rest of the story, but it turns out all just fine. Jesus meets them because they're standing on the promises of God. I'm gonna let you go because you didn't come here to hear me talk, but thank you for your patience. You guys listened really well. Boys and girls, I want you to give it up for yourselves for the great audience that you've been. Come on, come on, great job listening tonight. And so here's the deal. We're about to have trunk or treat. You may have to stand for a little while in line, but not that bad, not that bad. At Disney recently, the, the waits for uh, the new rides in the Star Wars area, four hours long, right? I promise you will not wait four hours, much quicker than that. But thank you for coming, let's pray. And then our host will come out at every campus and tell you your next move. Father God, thank you for the example of Shad Mesh Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and how they were willing to stand when the whole world bowed. We make our prayer in Jesus' name, amen.